Now that we've had a really brief introduction to Plot9 and visualization, let's walk through an example of creating a visualization. And the visualization that we'll focus on is a very famous one. So, this is a visualization created before computers, and this was created by someone named Charles Joseph Menard. And Edward Tufta, uh, who is kind of the guru of data visualization and telling stories with data, praised this as one of the best visualizations of data ever created. And this was created before computers, before Python, before Plot9. This was just done by thinking very thoroughly about a problem and then sitting down with a blank sheet of paper, a ruler, and a lot of insight into the story that he was trying to tell. And the story that he was trying to tell was about what happened to Napoleon's Grand Army when it invaded Russia in the early 19th century. And so Napoleon assembled a huge army called the Grand Army and sent it in to Russia. And there were a number of battles. Napoleon did relatively well at first, but as time went on, his men were whittled down slowly, slowly, slowly as they got deeper and deeper into Russia. And eventually, the Russian winter and the courageous fighting of the Russian troops forced the Grand Army to retreat. This visualization tells that story. As you go from left to right, from west to east, you can see visually the columns of men slowly shrinking down to a very narrow point. And then you can see the armies turning back around and heading in the opposite direction. And the width of the line represents how large Napoleon's army was. And you can see, as the army returns back, it's splitting up and diverging to different destinations. And so you have both time and space being represented by the x-axis. And you have the width of the line representing the number of men. And one thing that we won't do in our visualization is at the bottom you also have the temperatures, and you can see the temperatures getting lower and lower and lower, and you can see the toll that the temperature is taking on the number of troops. So here's what the data look like if we save it as, say, a CSV. And so we can call the columns, the longitude, the latitude, the number of troops, the direction that they're going, either advancing or retreating, and the division. And so recall at the end, as they're retreating, Napoleon's army breaks off into smaller groups. This allows us to keep track of that. And so here's our data formatted in a way that a computer can make sense of. And so recall that the latitude and longitude are ways of dividing up our world into uh, coordinates. And so if you use a GPS device, it's telling you your latitude and longitude. And these are basically the GPS coordinates of Napoleon's army. But that isn't the only data that's being reflected here. There are also the names of the cities, and those cities represent battles or destinations for Napoleon's army, and those two have latitude and longitude positions, and you have the name of the city. You could also add in additional information here, like the populations of the cities, and then you could use, say, like the size aesthetic to show the size of those population centers. So here's a first pass at plotting these data, and so we've loaded in this data frame through pandas. We have also imported in all of our commands from plot9. That command looks something like, and we have a pandas data set where we've loaded in the CSV file that I just showed you for the troop sizes. And what we're going to do is we're going to plot these points using the longitude and latitude for the x and y coordinates. And then we're going to use the path geometry, and that's done just by this plus sign, and then saying let's create a path on our plot where the size is the number of troops, and so the width of the line represents how many troops there are, and then the color represents the direction, so cyan for retreating, red for advancing, 
And so advancing in this direction, retreating in this direction, and then we also have additional divisions, and so this is going to plot these separately. So after we've done this, we have something that looks a lot like that visualization. We have the width of the lines representing the size of the troops. We have different colors for advancing and retreating, and we have the different branches of the army represented as different paths. But what we're lacking is important context, and so this xy coordinate space doesn't mean much without the cities involved. And so we can add in the cities using a different geometry. And so there's a text geometry where you can add text explicitly to your plots. And this is going to use the text in the city column from our cities pandas file. And this is just saying use it in a pretty big font. And so then the city names appear on our plot, and so you have Moscow all the way here at the end, and you have Minsk here in the middle, and so this is giving you a historical context for what's going on. If you're a student of the Napoleonic Wars, you can recognize some of these place names and understand why there was a big decrease in the size of the army at particular points in time. There are a lot of things you could do to make this map even prettier. So, for example, you could add the outlines of modern-day countries. Um, you could annotate specific battles. You could annotate dates. Uh, you could put the temperature, uh, like we saw before, with, say, a faceted graph. All of those would be interesting and fun to do, but uh, I'm not going to do too much. Uh, but what I am going to do is I'm going to tweak the colors a little bit uh, so that uh, we have an emphasis on the retreating uh, army, and you have that in, in like a blood red color to uh, sort of make that a little more visceral. So that is a very brief introduction to how you can create plots using Plot9. This is a derivative of the original Menard plot that uh, Tufta liked so much. Uh, I used data from Hadley Wickham, who used this as an example in ggplot2, and then I adapted it to plot9. So uh, there has been a number of translations over time, and hopefully you can play around with it yourself and create your own version of this visualization. As you're doing this, as you're playing around with it, make sure that you do have plot9 installed. Uh, you can use the pip utility that comes with Python. Also make sure that you have the data saved in the appropriate location, just like uh, for the previous exercises that we've done. You need to be able to access the data to read it in through pandas. One issue that often crops up is that people use the command line to generate quick and dirty plots. I encourage you not to do that. I encourage you to save all the plots that you create, both the commands that you use to create them, and then have a file that you can run automatically to regenerate those plots. And so no plot is perfect and you will often need to go back multiple times to correct it or refine it. And so make sure you save your work and sometimes you'll have a really beautiful plot that you want to have that same sort of thing for a different data set. And so you always want to be able to go back, retrieve the commands you use to create a plot, and then create a new plot that looks exactly like it with a different data set. And that's the beauty of the grammar of graphics, because it abstracts out a lot of the decisions about creating these plots. You can take the same visualization and apply it to multiple data sets with not a lot of effort on your part.